Welcome to Stay Alive and Fit with Liz Goodman, a new innovative radio show that taps into what's happening now in the medical industry, featuring fitness experts, foodies, and medical professionals. Get it right here and be an active participant in your health. Mixed messages about what is best for your health can make you feel like you're on a runaway train. So hop on and have some fun while Liz navigates this medical mystery ride. Call 888-565-1470 and ask Liz, your source for the latest medical technology and long life advice. All aboard, here's Liz Goodman. Welcome. This show is the show that tapped into what's happening now in the medical industry. Thank you so much for listening. Hi, good evening. I'm Liz. Ask me and I'll find the answers you seek to all your fitness and medical questions. Think of this as the show that you get all your VIP access to all your medical, fitness, or food questions. Tonight is all about mini dental implants. Implants. <laughs> oh my gosh. I am having a little trouble talking just because I had a lot of work done on my mouth on Monday. I had nine teeth worked on, nine, two of which were implants, but I'm not in any pain. I'm actually feeling great. I did it in New York. I got in a plane. I came back here and it's two days later and I'm here to talk to you about what I went through and it was fabulous, pain-free experience and uh, very necessary. If you guys have been watching my show for the last couple of months, you would have known or noticed that I was missing a couple of teeth which was quite embarrassing to be on air. But tonight, my dentist, who's known me since I'm like five years old, a good family friend, uh, located in Brooklyn, but does a procedure that's worth traveling to Brooklyn for. It's a mini dental implant procedure, which is very safe, very effective, much less invasive than a regular dental implant and very quick healing. So these are my new teeth. These are temporaries. This is not what my teeth are going to look like when they're finished in a couple of weeks. So before we get to the doctor, and I tell you more about this affordable, less invasive, invasive way to save your teeth from dentures, dentures, um, I want to tell you a little bit about um, some other things that are going on with my show. For instance, starting September, I know we originally talked about in August, we'd be having a FM. It's not going to happen this August. There's some delays, technical differences, di or difficulties that have been going on. Instead, we're going to be featuring this show on 93.5 on Thursday nights from 6 to 7 p.m. starting September. Um, I have to do a shout out, quick shout out, if you've seen my hair tonight. It's very curly and perky. Part of staying alive, healthy and fit is feeling good about how you look and that also includes beautiful hair. So I'd like to thank my very dear uh, newest best friend, Destiny, who's located right down the road on Federal Highway in Boca Raton. Her number is 561-571-6352. She did a fabulous job on this beautiful blowout you see right here. So if you like the way my hair looks, she's great to call. Um, I'd like to thank my sponsors at VIP Event Production Group and the Center for Family and Child Enrichment. This show is sponsored by Dr. Michelle Kerwin and Dr. Frank Snipes of the Center for Family and Child Enrichment. It's a private nonprofit community-based organization that serves children who've been abused, neglected, and or abandoned. It's a very worthy organization. They take private donations. If you know a child with severe emotional disturbances or mental health needs, or she, uh, she or he is custody of parents or relatives who have chronic runaways, or they just don't have uh, any support, please call the Center for Child Family Enrichment at 305-624-7450. If you'd like to talk to us, generally you can call us at 888-565-1470, but I have Dr. Rodney Leibowitz calling in from Orlando tonight instead of sitting next to me, so you won't be able to call in any questions. If you do want to ask a question to the doctor, you can text or email, actually just email it at liz at stayaliveandfit.com. Liz at stayaliveandfit.com, and we can get a question to the doctor, and I can answer it for you next week. Uh, you can tune in to us at www.stayaliveandfit.com and click the Watch Live page, and you will be able to see what's going on on the show, see who Dr. Rodney is, see how my beautiful hair looks. Again, thanks to Destiny. So whether you're 20 or 80, 
male or female, mixed messages about what's best for your health can make you feel like you're on a runaway train. So get on board with me and I'll help you stay fit, focused, and fabulous at any age. Our topic for tonight, as I told you, is mini dental implants. There's a specific procedure called the Shatkins procedure. And Dr. Rodney Leibowitz is going to be on the phone with us as soon as we get back to talk all about the FDA news saying that flossing no more. We don't need to floss all those hours wasted, all those years wasted, all that time spent flossing your teeth. Could it be? Could it be true? Do they know what they're talking about? Well, Dr. Rod does. He's going to be on the phone any minute and talk about all the ways that you can have the perfect smile, great smile, pain-free, no more dentures, throw them in the garbage, call Dr. Rod, listen to the the show tonight. Stay tuned. Don't go away. Don't touch that dial. After the break, our healthy hot topic of the week. Stay tuned to AM 1470 WNN. You're listening to Stay Alive and Fit with Liz Goodman. Introducing VIP Event Production Group. New York, L.A., and South Florida join together to become the upcoming VIP Premier Event and Decor Production Company. We are an in-house, full-service, quality social and corporate design team with a combined 60 years experience. For your convenience, we have a complete showroom with floral, lighting, room draping, and dance floor wrapping designs. Our staff includes event coordinators, videographers, photographers, along with DJs and entertainment. To complement your event, we have an online website with promotional items and party favors. To book your event, call 888-727-8997 or go online to vipproductiongroup.com. that music to wind down how are you this evening thank you for listening welcome to stay alive and fit tonight's show is all about mini dental implants an affordable less invasive invasive way to save your teeth from dentures so if you want to keep that great smile if you like the one i now have which i didn't have two days ago or last month that you saw me on the air and not break your bank you must stay tuned right now because my very dear family friend dr Rodney Leibowitz, I know him as Dr. Rod, will tell you all about this amazing procedure. He'll be joining live right now uh, from Orlando, Florida. I want to tell you that he is a very good friend. He knows me since I'm 10 years old. When I lost and damaged my six front teeth after being hit in the mouth with a tennis racket, he is a friend of my dad's. He's a friend of my mom's. He's a friend of everybody. He's worked on everybody in my family. He's pain-free. When I was a kid, I remember going to his office, and he was the only dentist you can go to and actually pick uh, an A-track. I don't want to talk about how old I am or or a CD uh, out from uh, his library of music and be able to put a headphone on and listen to music so that you didn't have to think about being at the dentist. Now he puts the TV on. He's quick. He's painless. Um, like I said, Monday, he worked on nine teeth, including two implants. You'd never know it because here I am talking and on a plane a few days later. Welcome, doctor. Are you on the line? Dr. Rod? Hello? Yes, I'm here. Hi, I'm here. Doc. How are you? How are you feeling? I'm feeling okay. I know I drive you crazy, and I drove you crazy, and I ask a lot of questions, and I research everything on the Internet, and I know a lot of people do that, and I know you called me and said, stop looking at the Internet, right? You really research it. Stop looking at the Internet. Right. <laughs> so do you want to tell your patients, uh, first of all, a little bit about what how you butchered me, beat me, yet I'm still standing here smiling today, and uh, what, what you did to me on Monday, and why every Boca person should fly to New York to see you. It's worth it. Well, well there are loads of good dentists who do procedures like this all over. The, the trouble is to find them all, because this is, a, is not a new technique. It's a technique that basically is, has been rediscovered and being used by a lot of dentists, and it's, it's really, it's life-changing. Okay. Now, when you came into me a few months ago, I told you you needed this, this, and this, and you waited, thank guess, about two, three months, was it, Liz? 
Yes. Something like that. And I told you how simple it is, and you said, no, it's an implant, and I know I'm going to swell. I know it's hard, and I told you about this this mini implant. There's nothing mini about it. The only thing mini about it is the size. It may be called better a small diameter implant because the diameter is why we call it the mini. It's the same length as the other implants, the conventional full diameter implant, but that's where it ends. Just the length. The, the entire procedure is similar, but not the same by any stretch of the imagination. You know, first, before I talk about this mini small diameter implant, um, the, the conventional full diameter implant, well, that's been around a long time. We've been actually doing it since about 1985, 1986, and the truth is it's wonderful. It works. There's nothing that could have saved your teeth in the past but the implant when you lost the tooth. And it's a wonderful, wonderful procedure. The small diameter implant, well, actually, it's older than the large diameter, full diameter implant. It was actually used in France in about 1966, 1967. However, the restoration of putting a tooth on it really wasn't perfected till Dr. Todd Shackin did it, and that was at about 1999. And although the implant was out there, it wasn't being utilized to make full restorations of teeth on it. And in 1999, he perfected a technique to do it. And all the years in between 1999 till I actually discovered it, which was about five years ago, six years ago, I knew nothing about it. And the only way I found it was when I had a patient who was having a full diameter implant put in, well, actually, let's say six full diameter implants put in, and it didn't work. It didn't work because a full diameter implant has certain parameters. You need to have bone. Well, this particular patient, she had teeth taken out. She had bone put in, which we call bone augmentation, to make it proper to put the implant in. And she sat in a denture for almost a year, a little more than a year, actually. And the denture was put there so that her bone can heal properly. And she hated the denture, hated it, but knew there was a light at the end of the tunnel. So she comes into the office, and I had an oral surgeon in the office placing these full diameter implants. Because the full diameter implant really requires a bit of a surgical intervention. A rather large pilot hole is put into bone. And because it's a bigger pilot hole, Maybe it's a sonometer or a sonometer and a half. It's a surgical intervention. And you need to have enough bone so that you can place this implant in. Because this full diameter implant, when you make the hole, you make it a little bigger. You put the implant in. After the surgery is done, the implant, the gum tissue over the implant is sutured or sewed closed. And you put the implant to sleep. It sleeps in the mouth for a period of anywhere from four to six months, and in some cases up to a year. And after that period of time, you wake it up. You send the patient back to the surgeon. The surgeon does another surgical technique. He uncovers the implant. He puts what's known as a healing cap so that the gum tissue can now accept another piece. Kind of like a male and a female attachment. The male attachment is the implant itself that's been put to sleep and waken up. The male attachment is what I construct. The patient, after the patient heals with the healing cap for approximately, I'd say, two weeks to three weeks, they come back to me, and I take an impression so that I can make that male attachment for the patient to build a cap over it. That takes about two weeks. After I get that part... Hey, can I can I interrupt part. you for one second, sure. Rod? Because the show is only half an hour tonight, and I, I is this the procedure you're doing, or is this the old procedure? No, my procedure is going to be a little different. Okay, so I don't want you to keep on going into this because we've got only about 12 minutes left. I have a couple of emails that were already emailed to me with questions. So if you can just give me a really brief description as to what you did to me, exactly why yours is so much easier than that, like, long-sounding procedure that you just described, and why I'm sitting here able to talk and look pretty three days later, which I wouldn't have done if I had done the other type of implant. But we really only have about 10 minutes, and I want to get to a couple of these questions that had been emailed 
All right, so now we'll go to you. And after that long-winded procedure, I'm going to talk about the small diameter mini implant that was perfected by Dr. Todd Shatkin. First of all, it's less invasive. The pilot hole is basically a dot. Second of all, it's less discomfort. Because you're not cutting into your bone in a major way, you're really not going to feel a lot of discomfort. Third, less healing time. I told you about the other implant. It takes anywhere from four months to a year or a little more. Well, when I put that implant in your bone, I put a tooth right on it. And mm-hmm. you can smile and show everybody your teeth because the tooth went on it. Third of all, I talked about all these extra visits. Well, there's also less visits. Now, less visits, what does that mean? It means that when I put that implant in, and Dr. Shatkin's particular implant, which is the same titanium as the full diameter, has something coated on it called osteon. And that osteon, it helps the implant become integrated with the bone much quicker. But it's not just the integration. The, the function of the small diameter mini implant is done in, in a screwing fashion. Basically, Liz, you were screwed on Monday. <laughs> well, implant. it's been a long it's, time since I got screwed, Rod, so thanks. I don't know if that's well, a good or a bad this, thing. This <laughs> is in a good way you were screwed. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's a small diameter imprint. It's less visits, less this, less that. You know what? For the first time, less is more. I mean, you don't have to have a lot of surgery done. If you're on Coumadin, because it's a non-surgical procedure, you don't have to go off a blood thinner like Coumadin or Clavix. You know, the implant itself, and this is the least important part of it, the least important part, but it is an important part, it's less, much less expensive, almost half the cost, because it has so many less moving parts than the large diameter implant, so many less moving parts, there isn't as big a lab cost. Now, that cost is driven, when we charge it for an implant, by by the specialist who's a surgeon and by the, the amount of lab work that's required. With the small diameter implant, now, when I finish your teeth, you're going to get something called a zirconia fused to porcelain cap. Zirconia. You know, kind of like those uh, fake diamonds made out of zirconia. <laughs> right. Well, actually... They're actually strong. They're real diamonds. Well, now that we've actually Dr. Jack and and other groups of people have perfected this technique, that's the cap we use. And I make caps for people who don't have implants also with this zirconia, and it is the most lifelike tooth in the world. It's gorgeous. It's a beautiful tooth. So everything is less but the end is much, much more. It's a prettier procedure. It's an easier procedure. It's a less invasive procedure. Again, less is more. Right. So I have a couple of questions that were texted into me. The first question, if you just bear with me a second. So with general uh, implants, uh, the emailer, which is a woman by the name of Barbara, wanted to know, uh, is there a chance of rejection like there is with uh, normal implants? Okay, so small diameter, large diameter implants. There's a 4 to 6% chance, more like a 5% chance of rejection by the body. When a large diameter implant is rejected, it really doesn't get rejected in most cases for two years or so, or two and a half. Removing it, that's a major procedure. It's surgery. Then you have to let it heal. Then you have to put bone in. Again, you're looking at two, three years that you can put it back. The small diameter, it's the same 4 to 5% rejection and When it loosens up, it loosens up usually in a month or two. And all you do is unscrew it, clean out that area, and because it's so small, you put another one in. And in my office, and I say in all the offices that have training for the Shacken group, we don't even charge the patient to redo the implant or the crown because it's such an easy procedure. And we want our patients, because they're scared to death of everything, to understand It's not about the money. It's about the faith and the trust that you have in us as dentists because a national poll was done, and one of the most trusted professions in this country are dentists. And you know something? We don't take it for granted. We earn that trust every day, and we care. We take everything we do very personally. Okay, I have a question number two. Thank you for answering that. Thanks for your question, Barbara. Another question from Joanne from Boynton. How complicated is a sinus lift in connection with an implant? A sinus lift is a very easy procedure, but very involved. I say it's easy 
because when it's done, what we do is we, the surgeon does, is open up the sinus, he packs something, he pushes up the sinus so you have enough length for the implant. Now, the implant, when it's large diameter, is very wide. And if it does broach into the sinus, sometimes it's okay, but it's a large width. And on occasions, it can cause an issue. Now, the small diameter implant, because it's so thin, there's a lining in the sinus. Not that it matters. It's called the Schneiderian membrane. But when you broach into the sinus, you break the Schneiderian membrane. When we place these implants, and if there's a little broach into the sinus, and I've seen this, that little membrane actually grows over that small diameter wow. implant as it can with a large, but not as common. And you've done a, a sinus lift without having any surgery. So sinus lifts huh. can be a little complicated, but with the small diameter, well, we do a sinus lift and we don't need to charge it. So you don't even really need, well, first of all, the tooth I had done isn't in the area of sinuses, right? It's the one to the right or the, of that, that would, that well, even if it wasn't, the x-rays we take are very diagnostic, and you have a very, very high sinus line. So no matter where I would have put an implant in your particular mouth, your sinuses are so far away, it wouldn't have mattered. And, you know, you walked around for a long time without teeth because you had to wait for the bone to heal. You had bone augmentation done because there was a giant hole. When you put a small diameter implant in, I'd say... 95% of the time when I do an extraction at that same visit, I put that implant in, I put other materials in to help it heal, and you walk out with a tooth the day I took out your tooth. Had I seen you when you lost those two teeth, and I know the grief you went through when you lost those two teeth, I would have been able to let you walk out with teeth that looked wonderful. Well, with my situation, which was different, I had such a severe infection that it was actually affecting my sinuses and it was making me feel lightheaded and dizzy and all these other things and then they finally got rid of the tooth and i felt a lot better so um you know obviously it affected my sinuses beforehand well yeah but the difference with the large diameter because it's so large you could impinge majorly on that sinus area with the small diameter you particularly had enough bone that i could have angled it without even going near the sinus making sure that I had cleansed out the entire infected area, and you still would have walked out with an implant and a tooth over it. See, here's what I love about Dr. Rod, folks, is I had gone to so many dentists, and they wanted to do all this perio work, and they wanted, you know, they were telling me I had all this bone loss and all these issues with my bone, and Dr. Rod was like, Liz, you don't have any of those issues. They're trying to make money off of you. I, did, I can do your teeth with no problem. You don't have the bone loss. Once I clean the, the gums, once I heal the teeth, once I put the teeth in where they belong, it's going to heal naturally because you're not nearly as bad as they're telling you that you are. And that's the problem with dentists. It's trying to find that trust factor with someone you know is trying to actually help you and not just trying to, you know, make some money off you. And that does happen with dentists, I find, correct? Well, it can. But, you know, part of your issue was you had pockets that weren't caused by, by a, a, a disease-born entity. You had pockets from the temporaries you were walking around in your mouth. But those temporaries are plastic, and you walked around with them for a long time, for a very long time, and it caused inflammation. Now, when you have inflammation in your mouth, what occurs is the body secretes something called a proteolytic enzyme, protein for proteolytic eating, a protein-eating enzyme. So that, that secretion causes the body to be very different. It actually melts the bone around your teeth, and it can cause pocketing because you have inflammation from those temporary caps you walked around with, what, for six months? Eight months oh, God, I walked around with it for about five years. <laughs> well, that caused a lot of your issues with your gum tissue. Your actual bone level is really great, but you had such inflamed gums, and you had secretion of this proteolytic enzyme, a body's defense mechanism, to make you lose bone, because losing bone, in a lot of cases, has nothing to do with disease. It has to do with the body's defense mechanisms, because prehistorically, if you got a cavity and it got infected, what would occur is your body would, would produce this enzyme, because if it didn't, you'd get an infection all the way on top. There was nowhere for it to drain. It can cause a septicemic reaction, causing the body to go into a shock and you die. But if we had this enzyme secreted, the bone around the tooth would disappear quite a bit, 
and you'd be able to wiggle out your own tooth, and it would drain through the socket, not poisoning your body. So Rod, you we're, they're, I'm so sorry, Rod. They're telling me we have one minute left. We're going to have to have you back on the show. We normally have an hour, but during the summer, it's only half an hour. To talk to Dr. Rodney, it's 718-531-8500. Is that correct? That's it. 531-8500. Thank you so much for joining me tonight, Doc. That's I'd love nice to have night. you back again. And you um, got it. Uh, Final words, Doc? Give your website. Yes. Be true to yourself or they'll be false to you. And quickly, uh, floss or no floss for the FDA? Flossing. Flossing is something that removes food between your teeth. But again, I feel vindicated because I always said when you floss, you can cause inflammation by cutting your gums. You get secretion of this enzyme. You get bone loss. Use a soft toothbrush. Brush carefully and thoroughly. The plaque is not usually removed easily with a flossing. It's removed with toothbrushing. Okay, good night, folks. See you next week on Stay Alive and Fit. Tune in Thursday nights at 6 p.m. Thanks to Dr. Rodney Leibowitz. And thank you to my sponsors, VIP um, Event Production Group and the Center for Child and Family Enrichment, Dr. Michelle Kerwin and Dr. Frank Snipes. Good night, everybody. See you soon. Listening to Stay Alive and Fit with Liz Goodman, a new innovative radio show that taps into what's happening now in the medical industry. Featuring fitness experts, foodies, and medical professionals, get it right here and be an active participant in your health. Mixed messages about what is best for your health can make you feel like you're on a runaway train. Get ready to hop aboard again next time for Stay Alive and Fit with Liz Goodman. The opinions expressed on the preceding sponsored program were strictly those of its hosts, guests, and callers, and not necessarily...